Hello, sisters in Christ. I pray you are all having a blessed day today. I'm going to go over some fruits of repentance today. I, um, I know there is some confusion over exactly what repentance means. And yes, it is a change of mind. It is also a change of heart. And if John the Baptist said, bring forth fruits, meat for repentance, that means there's evidence. That means that there's proof of that repentance. So if it's a change of mind, there's going to be evidence to back that up. And it's great that the word of God, it, it always lays everything out there for us. You know, if there's any kind of confusion that man comes and brings into the picture and, and, and um, people get all flustered about, you can always go back to the Word of God and and it will be clear and concise so that's what I'm gonna do for you all today um, I just I really pray that this message blesses someone that the Lord uses this message to um, really just convict hearts out there um, to just be broken before him so I want to give you these seven fruits that Paul specifically lays out in the book of 2 Corinthians. And, um, and just encourage you guys to just seek the Lord, search your own hearts, have, um, have him search your hearts, ask him to search your heart and, uh, and just, you know, bring, to mind anything that you are struggling struggling with that you know is grieving the Lord that is grieving the Holy Spirit and um, and just bring that to him in true repentance we know that Jesus said repent and believe the kingdom of God is at hand repent and believe the gospel so we know that you cannot believe without doing what first repenting we know that you cannot be converted without repenting first because the Bible says repent and be converted repent and be baptized so we know it is a command the Lord says he commands all men everywhere to repent. So this is very serious. Now, in chapter 7, Paul is speaking to the Corinthian church, and he is just overjoyed, and he is rejoicing in the fact that these people were so broken. They had read his other epistles that Titus had brought to them, and they were so broken over their sin from what they had read. The Lord had, he had completely just shattered their, their hearts before him. And they repented, and Paul was so glad that they had done that. Um, I'm going to start reading in verse 9, chapter 7. Now I rejoice, not that ye were made sorry, but that ye sorrowed to repentance. For ye were made sorry after a godly manner, that ye might receive damage by us in nothing. For godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation, not to be repented of not to be regretful for, but the sorrow of the world worketh death. For behold, the selfsame thing that ye sorrowed after a godly sort, what carefulness it wrought in you. Yea, what clearing of yourselves. Yea, what indignation. Yea, what fear. Yea, what vehement desire. Yea, what zeal. Yea, what revenge! In all things ye have approved yourselves to be clear in this matter. So he lists right there seven things, just in verse 11, that are fruits 
of repentance. So I'm going to go over these things again and just summarize each one. And I, I want us all to just really think, you know, with this sin that I'm struggling with or in this area or just in general in coming to the Lord, have I gone through these things in my heart? So the first thing he mentions is carefulness. Carefulness, and it, that means just to be eager, to have this eagerness to, to do the right thing. Eagerness to just forsake your sin completely. Um, you know, it's, it's a conviction. It's a, it's a striving after. That's what the Bible says. That's what the, um, the Greek translation um, says that it's an actual striving for to be earnest, to do the right thing. The second thing is, is clearing of yourselves. You know, when we, when we realize just how wretched we have been our whole lives, how lost we've been in our sin, how evil and wicked the the deeds that we have done throughout our life that have come forth from our hearts, you want, when you really repent, you truly want to clear your name with God. You want him to see you as brand new and pure. You want to make all things right with him in his eyes. And that is also evidence that you are truly his child if you have that heart to do what is right so wanting to clear yourself of that sin wanting to clear your name before god having an earnestness to do so is evidence that you have repented the third thing he mentions is indignation which means to, to be vexed, vexation of spirit, to be grieved, to be um, irritated by your sin, to be angry at your sin. Um, and again, that's another fruit of forsaking wickedness. And, um, you know, you, you have to be able to see your sin the way God sees your sin. If you don't see your sin the way God sees your sin, you haven't truly repented. If there's any part of you that still enjoys that sin or likes it or, you know, that you have not truly repented from your heart. So you can say you've had a change of mind all you want, but is the evidence there? Is the evidence there to back it up? Um, you know, when I first became born again, I fell. I fell to sin one day that I was not planning to do. I did not wake up that morning and think, oh, you know, I'm going to, uh, you know, just do this and whatever, you know. Um, I had that heart for, for righteousness, and I fell in a moment where I did fall to that sin, and I was so incredibly grieved by it. I laid on my bed, and I sobbed and sobbed and sobbed and just cried out to God for mercy. And I knew that he allowed that to happen because he wanted me to see just how serious sin is in his eyes. When you're his child, there's... You, there's just no place for that, you know, for, for willful sin. Now, he, he gives us grace to grow, but in some areas that need to be cut off immediately, that needs to be cut off immediately, right? Um, and so it was good in that time because I was able to really fully understand just how serious 
my sin was. And I never did it again after that. Never again after that. And um, that brings me to number four, which is fear. Paul mentions, yea, what fear you have had. We have to have the fear of God. We have to work out our salvation with fear and trembling. And to those people who say, I, why do I need to be afraid of God? I'm made brand new in Jesus Christ by believing. Um, they're not made brand new at all. They're still servants of the devil. And um, when you truly fear, <laughs> when you have that fear of God, and this is what I'll tell some sisters too, you know, pray and ask the Lord to give you that fear. When you have that temptation to fall to sin, ask him to put that fear in you and he will do it. He will do it. You know, you've got to really truly understand that he, he is the one who can kill the body and soul in hell. He is a wrathful God. He hates sin. He detests anything that is not holy like him. So you have to have that fear. Does that repentance bring about fear into, into your heart? The right kind of fear for the Lord? and not falling to it again. And the fifth thing is a vehement desire, a longing for, a strong desire to turn from your sin. It is longing for righteousness. It is longing to be like Jesus Christ. It's a longing that comes from within, from your heart, because he puts that brand new heart in you, like I've told you guys about. Once he puts that brand new heart in you, it is a heart for righteousness, okay? It is not a heart that is okay with sin because we've been made righteous. Our flesh has been, been made righteous in his eyes. That is not a brand new heart. I don't know what you call that. that if anything, that probably just blackens and darkens that person's heart even more to have that belief. They enjoy their sin. When you have a strong desire to turn from sin, to do the right thing, that is evidence that you have repented. And the last two things, six and seven, are zeal and punishment, okay? That means that you are zealous to receive that correction from God over your past sins. And when you really understand just how wicked your sins are and who you were before you truly came to Christ, you do have that zeal for, for chastening, for discipline, for punishment, for correction, because you want to do the right thing by him. So these are all the seven fruits of repentance. I think it's pretty, um, it, it's, it's pretty cut and dry. Um, I don't think there should be any kind of confusion as to what repentance really truly is. Now, what does he say? What is the last sentence he says in verse 11 after he mentions those, those seven fruits? He says, in all things ye have approved yourselves to be clear in this matter. True repentance is what blots out your sins. True repentance is what blots out your sins, you guys, in the eyes of the Lord. It is not just, well, this is what Jesus did on the cross for me. No, having that broken spirit and contrite heart, being completely broken before the Lord. And if there's certain areas in your life that you are, have a weakness in that you don't have a strong hatred for yet, ask the Lord to give that to you. And when he sees the desires of your heart, he fulfills them. He will do that for you. He will give you that strong hatred for things that he has a strong hatred for. So um, I hope this clears it up for you guys. I love you all. And um, I hope you're blessed by this message. And 
there's no confusion as to what true repentance is. So be blessed in Jesus' name, and I will talk to you very, very soon. Take care.